Hey there guys, Mike here. Mike's DVDs and Blu-rays collection is back with a, another episode for you guys to check out. I got some recommendations and um, some stuff I've been watching here lately down the rabbit hole of DAG films and Mike's DVDs and Blu-rays collection down deep in my collection hole. And uh, th these are some movies I've had for a while that's been on my shelf. I haven't been able to do a video about them yet, um, but I uh, went back and watched them all. There was a couple of them I didn't watch, I had never seen, so it gave me a chance to catch up on them and stuff. But uh, kind of the uh, Joseph von Sternberg bug kind of bit me pretty hard in late July and August, and um, I came across a couple things that um, kind of got me got me wanting to kind of go back and discover and check out these sets I have um, and everything so what, what kind of got it started was I'm not I'm not really sure how I came across it per se but I did get into it uh, was um, Joseph von Sternberg's autobiography now this is a book I uh, started off with this I'm still in the process of reading it it's it's really great it's a really good one but he wrote this book in the I think the mid to late 60s uh, this is called a uh, fun in a Chinese laundry I know it's kind of a funny name uh, but it, it has um, something to do with one of the movies or something like that it's it's kind of odd but this is basically his autobiography that he wrote so you get kind of his opinion his view his view of his life and of Hollywood how Hollywood treated him how he treated actors and actresses uh, his you know story of discovering Marlena Dietrich and you know bringing her to Hollywood and the rest is history uh, where she would become a superstar and everything and they, they were known as a team pretty much you, it, you know it's almost not like so much a Svengali situation where he's kind of controlling her every move or anything but they made a total of I don't know five or six films uh, very successful at Paramount and um, everything but all good things come to an end and um, you know, by the mid mid thirties, they they their collaboration had ended, but everything. But it has a lot in here. It goes way beyond the thirties and forties. It it has a lot of a lot of uh, info in here, especially about his early days. Um, you know, coming over here to America, um, and the thing was, he he like came to America as an immigrant, learned English, had some success. He went back to uh god what is it austria or not maybe not austria hung hungary or germany somewhere along in there i'm sorry i don't know the exact country he came from but he came back there he went back home had some more success and stuff and he kind of went back and forth a little bit each time he would be uh you know a little more than he was the last time so yeah so uh, i got this book which is his autobiography and then I, I couldn't resist because these books were so cheap I mean you can find a lot of stuff on eBay and um, these honestly were just the fun in the Chinese laundry is a little more rare um, it, it cost it cost me about 30 bucks but that's really cheap compared to how how much these go for especially in a that's like the second a second printing or third printing of it uh, and then uh, I picked this one up for uh, four bucks, guys. Four bucks in shipping. This is a hardbound book. It's in great shape. It's got the dust cover on it still. Uh, this is called Von Sternberg uh, by the author uh, John Baxter. Now, this is John Baxter's uh, version of Sternberg's life uh, and everything. You know, talking about the. Uh, Basically everything I just said, but you know, you got a different opinion, you got a different take on it all. Plus, you got different interviewees and different stuff like this. And this was done years and years after Sternberg had been had had passed away, and he had already done his autobiography and everything. Uh, but um, from what I've read, it's a highly acclaimed uh, book, a very good author and everything. 
but yeah, really cool. And you know, I got two books on Sternberg, so I'm kind of. I, I I started off on this reading a couple chapters, and then I was on that one. So, you know, but I, I couldn't pass up how cheap these autobiographies, these books were. So I had to jump on them. Uh, so it kind of inspired me, guys, to go back into my Joseph von Sternberg collection because I, I didn't realize I had so many of them. And I and I believe what really ticked all this, or what got all this started, was. Uh, this release this is from indicator and um, I believe I believe Kino put this out too but I went with uh, this one it's not very it's not been out for very long I don't think because um, I, I, I picked it up and I thought yeah 2023 this this was released by indicator uh, this is a movie called Thunderbolt and uh, as always, Indicator does really good work. This is a, a great addition. I don't even have to tell you too much about it. It's got a great booklet. It's got great dual artwork. Um, all that good stuff. Um, it's it's a movie from 1929. This I think this is technically his first. This is a, his first talkie. This is his first talkie movie. Um, I think a lot of people think that 1930s. Um, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, the Blue Angel was his first talkie, but it was that was Marlena Dietrich's first talkie. But anyways, 1929. Uh, this is for Paramount. Uh, stars uh, George Bancroft, which Joseph von Sternberg. Uh, th this is like not talked about a lot. You know, he gave Mar Marlena Dietrich her launch. You know, and made her a star, literally. Uh, but he really, really uh, kind of birthed. George Bancroft's performance. I mean, the movies that he appeared in that Sternberg directed um, are all acclaimed movies and really put him up, you know, up the pedestal in Hollywood's the hierarchy at the time of actors and stuff. Because he had done a few, uh, he did two silent movies with them uh, The Docks of New York and uh, a really good early gangster movie, uh, uh, Underworld. Uh, it's a silent movie called Underworld. Man, it, it, I think it, it may be technically the first gangster movie. Because you can see all the influence, say, to 1932 Scarface, for example. How, you know, that, was, that had to be an influence on him, and so on and so forth. But, uh, you know, but th this is a Thunderbolt. This is a, a George Bancroft is in this. It's also got an early role by Faye Ray. Uh, would be in King Kong a few a few years later. Uh, Richard Arlen, which you know he was a big actor at that time. Uh, but this has got a lot of cool stuff on here, uh, as always with Indicator. Uh, it's got a high definition remaster. It's got the original mono audio. Uh, it's got some audio commentaries uh, by Nick Pinker Pinkerton from twenty twenty one. Uh, it's got an uh, interview with Faye Ray from nineteen ninety. Uh, it's got two or three video uh, video supplements, appreciations uh, with some critics and stuff like that and everything. Um, this is the first time it's on blue on Blu-ray in the UK, and um, as always, uh, it's a limited edition, uh, limited to three thousand copies, and um, I don't know what number I got. But anyways, this is really nice. It really is. It's got a cool booklet. It's got some dual artwork going. I'll show that to you guys. And uh, this was a first time see, uh, first time watch, first time discovery of this movie. And uh, overall, it's kind of a. Um, it can almost be kind of a, kind of sort of follow up to Underworld in a way, but not exactly. It's hard to explain. Uh, but I definitely recommend Thunderbolt and in, in, in to check out Underworld. Uh, watch them both are really good but yeah some early crime movies uh, and everything so yeah Thunderbolt it's kind of a, kind of an odd movie just kind of sticks out and stuff and uh, and uh, it's 91 it's 91 minutes but it seems like it goes by super fast and um, I, I watched it twice and because um, I thought I'd missed something the first time because it just kind of ends it kind of it in, it has a good ending but it just kind of ends you kind of think oh it's over already you know, 
or something. So I don't I don't know. It, it, but it is very good. It's it's not his one of his very best movies, but uh, very good. Uh, well worth picking it up. So Thunderbolt. Next up, then this is a Eureka Masters of Cinema edition. I, I know I've shown this off and on different times throughout my YouTube videos and stuff, but this this time I really uh, I, I got it off the shelf. I re I wanted to rewatch it. Um, cause every time I watched it, I, it seemed like I was always missing something for something. Like I would have like, like I would have blank pictures in my head. Like, it's like, I remember this. I don't, well, why do I not remember it ending or something? But uh, anyways, this is 1927's or, uh, yeah, 1928's, uh, The Last Command, uh, for Paramount Pictures. And, uh, it's 88 minutes long. It's not very long. It's a silent movie, of course. Uh, stars uh, William Powell uh, would go on to be you know known as Nick Charles as the Thin Man. Uh, the big the big draw to this is uh, the actor Emil Jannings, which uh, he he's pretty much forgotten about today. But he was one of the biggest, most prestigious actors um, of the 1920s. I mean, first of all, in Germany, uh, you know, working for UFA, he was in movies like Faust and, um, a bunch, a bunch of movies. Uh, he was well known. He was one of the bigger, the big actors of the whole German expressionist movement in Germany and everything. He was one of the big key, key actors and stuff. And, um, he, he came to America. I don't know if, uh, Sternberg brought him over, to do some movies but he was briefly in hollywood towards the end of the silent era and um he actually won he won a couple of academy awards i think he won the first academy award for best actor i believe um and there and there's one movie uh that he won an uh, an oscar for that's an actually a lost film now um which kind of makes it hard to discover this actor because of that. I mean, one, one of his uh, German movies that survives from 1924 is uh, The Last Laugh. And uh, it, I think that was by F.W. Murnau. Murnau. And uh, it's a really good movie. I mean, it's a very good movie. Uh, the Last Laugh. Check that out. It's it's completely available. I only have a laser disc of it, but it's a very good movie. Uh, but yeah, The Last Command. Basically, uh, Emil Jannings is a... Uh, is a uh, Russian general, and uh, th this is around 1916, 14, when they had the Russian Revolution, and he's like this top guy, and everything. And then you got William Powell, who is kind of a, I guess he would be a Bolshevik or someone who's kind of against the army and stuff. And um, th them to uh, meet in Russia during that time, and. Um, you know, William Powell hates this guy, and after the war, after everything's said and done and over with, uh, the story kind of picks up in Hollywood, where uh, William Powell, uh, the Bolshevik, is now a Hollywood director, and uh, of all things, the general is now a bit supporting player in Hollywood, um, who's lucky that he's even working. You know, he goes from being a top general you know t rich and powerful man to being this nobody bit player in 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 movies and stuff it shows him kind of in the beginning you know getting treated like crap basically as an extra and everything and uh william powell saw his photo like his you know eight by ten glossy and it's like give me this guy because it reminded him of the general so they got him they bring him in he wants him as the general in this movie they're making and uh they bring him in and they both kind of recognize each other after a while but um but in emil jannings at that point he, he has kind of a shake to him because he's just he's had a rough life you know he, he a lot of stuff's happened to him he's got like a severe case of pd ptsd and everything but once once the camera rolls and it, it's basically a recreation of the russian revolution a war scene um it's kind of like uh emil jannings just goes in you know he he just kind of blanks out and just freaks out in his own mind like he's really there you know commanding this this battle 
uh, you know, he picks up the flag and he's holding it and there's, they're cranking the cameras over and it's like, it's, you know, it's, it's movie gold and everything. Uh, but, but the guy gets so worked up in the moment and everything that he, he dies and everything. And, but, but, but in towards the end of it, it's kind of like William Powell is actually like helping him and kind of honoring him at the end. So it kind of makes me think what, what were their, what was their relationship in Russia back then? You know, 10 years le earlier, 15 years earlier and stuff. Because it really doesn't go into that. It just kind of shows who, the, who they are in the beginning and stuff. So, But towards the end when he's dying, you know, William Powell, you know, is giving him that respect and honoring him as he dies. So it just kind of makes you think. It's like, what was their relationship like? You know, who, who, how well did they know each other previously, if any? But anyways, it's, it's a fascinating silent movie. It really moves. It, it's definitely a movie for someone who's not really into silent movies that I think you could really dig it. I mean, visually, it's just stunningly visually photographed and it's well acted. Um, it's also got a um, kind of a smaller, kind of a small role with, uh, I think, Evelyn Brent is in this. Uh, she plays the the actress Evelyn Brent she's very beautiful and Joseph von Sternberg used her in a few movies um, and I'll talk more about her as we get to it though but yeah The Last Command and then also from Eureka's Masters of Cinema I know I've probably shown this before but I just wanted to show it again but uh, The Blue Angel from 1930 uh, this is a uh, famously what put Marlena Dietrich on the map uh, he even really cemented uh, Joseph von Sternberg's career even more because it was such a big hit. Um, you know, after he made Thunderbolt, he went back to Germany to make this movie. And, you know, basically, you know, he got Marlena Dietrich and everything. And then after the movie wrapped and it was all over, he brought her back to Hollywood. And then that's where she was and everything. But, but this movie also has Emil Jannings in it. And... Um, it's not a silent movie. It's the first, um, his, well, it's, it's Dietrich's first, uh, talkie movie. So a lot of times I thought this was Sternberg's first talkie movie too, but it wasn't, uh, but yeah, really good. I mean, what can I say about the blue angel? I mean, um, has so much to it. There's, there's a lot of nice, uh, extras on here and stuff about Marlena Dietrich and about, uh, Sternberg and everybody, but yeah, I mean, great cast. It's got you know, you know, like I said, Emil Jannings, uh, Dietrich, and you know, Sternberg's direction and everything. But um, but yeah, uh, it, it says here, you know, it was it was the first German language sound film, one of the first ones, and uh, it was filmed uh, also in an English language version at the same time. And I'm trying to think, are they both on here? Yeah, I think they're yeah they're both on here, both versions. Uh, and it's also got a great video uh, video uh, supplement uh, with um, uh, Tag Gallagher. He does some really good ones, and uh, Tony Rands um, also does a uh, feature length audio commentary. I really like Tony Rands. He's a really great. Uh, Brit commentator, uh, critic, and everything. So yeah, I could talk about this a lot more, and you know, it's it's importance in the modernization of Hollywood and movies in general. Being you know, when the first sound movies and how it kind of kind of took Germany into the sound era and and it just made Dietrich a household name and everything. So, but there you go, The Blue Angel. And finally, guys, this is a movie I only saw once. I, I watched this on TV uh, a few years ago. And uh, this is from actually from 1935. And um, at this point, um, I don't know if this was a one-off deal, but Joseph von Sternberg uh, heads over to Columbia, Columbia Pictures, to make this movie. This is a uh, version of Crime and Punishment. 
the famous novel, uh, who's about Dostoevsky. I totally screwed that up. I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, it famously stars uh, Peter Lorre. It's got Edward Arnold and Marion Marsh. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it was a BP Sherberg uh, production. I think BP brought him over because he used to be a high up at Paramount during his day. So I think they brought him over for that. But uh, yeah, pretty much, I mean, Lori, Peter Laurie gives a really good performance in this. Um, I mean, if you're familiar with the book, you know, you know. But yeah, it, it's pretty good. I mean, it is only an hour and 28 minutes. Some people have said, yeah, it's not that, eh, it's not that, 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 But anytime you try to turn a literary classic into a movie, there's always going to be something missing or something. Maybe it even makes the book look better or something. But anyways, it's a, it's a really good movie, and it's, it's not seen that much. It's not advertised that much with, associated with Joseph von Sternberg. But it's definitely one of his movies. Now, this is a Mill Creek uh, DVD uh, it says the 80th anniversary series. I don't know if they had more movies in a series or what, but um, I picked this up. It's also available, um, I think Arrow Academy has a Blu-ray edition in the UK of it, which has some extras on it. This doesn't have any extras, but there you go. So there you go, guys. That's just some, some single releases of Joseph von Sternberg. I wanted to kind of show you guys and recommend... Um, I still really like uh, The Last Command. I, I remember renting that on VHS back in the uh, early, uh, early 90s. And uh, they have they have Paramount put out three silent movies on VHS. And I don't, I'm trying to think if it was like the 60th anniversary of those movies or Paramount was doing some kind of like a, celebration or something but they they released three of them first uh was the wedding march from 1928 by eric von stroheim which i i rented that and caught made a copy of it which is still not on i don't i believe it's still not on dvd or blu-ray uh, the uh, second one was the last command and the third one was uh the docks of new york uh, so you get two you know silent sternbergs and a and a uh, Von Stroheim movie uh, and stuff and um, uh, The Docks of New York and The Last Command would late, you know, come to DVD and all that stuff but still The Wedding March is very elusive I would, I would still like to see it it's uh, it, it's another one of those forgettable not forgettable but just not it's just not seen that much they're not, nobody talks about it much uh, but anyways guys Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think about Joseph von Sternberg and some of these films and everything. Let me know in the comments. Also, um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. So um, I got a couple more little Joseph von Sternberg things I want to I'm gonna do in some other videos. So um, uh, so check those out if you will. So later, guys.